Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, what is going on? My name is Marin TM, and welcome back to the channel and part two of this video. If you haven't already watched part one, I'll have that linked in the info cards and in the description of this video. Before we get into how to play Zone 426, around 41% of you guys watching are not subscribed. So if you have been enjoying the daily uploads, consider subscribing. Now let's get into today's episode. Okay, so getting right into it, we have the fourth zone. And if you played your early game and mid game out, as I talked about in yesterday's video, you'll get this zone because of your position in the third zone. The fourth zone is really all about scouting and thinking of rotation paths you can take into the fifth zone when it appears. What you want to do is think, how do I rotate if the fifth zone pulls north, south, east and west and have a pre-planned rotate in your head before the fifth zone even appears. A lot of players make their decision of how to rotate to the 50-50 zone when it pops. But if you do this, you're not playing optimally. And some of you might be asking, but Marin, what if I don't have a pad or Spider-Man? Do I wait for someone to place a pad? Do I insta-rotate? Do I go last behind another team? What do I do? Here's the thing. If you have a rotation path in your head from the fourth zone, and you insta-rotate by going out on the backside of your box. And this is essential, guys. Never ever go out of your box from the front side. Because the entire lobby will see you and start shooting at you. If you have a rotation path and rotate the millisecond the fifth zone pops, other people will be looking at the map and looking at the fifth zone. This gives you a head start on the rotate. Meaning you often can insta-rotate if you're quick enough and have a pre-planned rotate. But if there are people all around you in the fourth zone and you can't find a rotation path where you can hug the zone to freely get into fifth, then you want to build up a few boxes. Waste a few mats and get higher elevation. This way you will nearly guaranteed find a pad, considering there are other players around you. Remember, it's always better to use a few hundred extra mats and limit your RNG heavily compared to saving those 200 extra mats and playing based off whether you get lucky or not. Moving on, we have the fifth zone. One of the zones most people struggle with. When you are in the fifth zone, you always want to base up using metal. Using brick here is stupid as it makes your chances of getting lobby sprayed five times higher compared to using metal. In the fifth zone, if you've played your entire early and mid game correctly, you should have 500 wood, 400 brick, and 300 metal, totaling 1200 mats. 1200 is the golden number you want to aim for when practicing. Most low to mid level competitive players have under a thousand mats in the fifth zone. And 1200 mats is what you want to have when you don't have a single elimination. If you find yourself with 1200 mats in the fifth zone without an elim, pat yourself on the back. You've played a high level of Fortnite this far. Talking about eliminations, the fifth zone is the perfect zone to start going for pre-edit if you find yourself needing a refresh to get up those mats. The first pre-edit I want to talk about in the fifth zone is the wall pre-edit. Playing this wall pre-edit is very viable in both solos and duos. However, it comes at a slightly higher risk in solos. That's why I want to maintain focus on duos in this part of the video. When going for the wall pre-edit, the player in the duo with the lowest ping want to have the wall. The other player want to build out to the box in which you want to pre-edit with metal. This is crucial for this play to work. Additionally, you need to place cones on the boxes you build out, so that the player with the pre-edit can hide behind the cone, holding the wall and getting ready to shoot as soon as he gets at. If done right, you'll find yourself getting an amazing refresh. Don't be greedy here. If you only get one elim, take that body and be happy with it. Do not greed for the duo if he boxes away. This will make the chances of you all getting sprayed so much higher. The next pre-edit I want to talk about is the floor pre-edit. It's pivotal that it's executed like shown in the background footage. These are the three squares you want to select. Then, when you've got the pre-edited floor on the opponent you want to get a refresh on, place a stair to make him drop into your pre-built box with a cone in it, giving him no escape and giving you a perfect refresh elimination. 
Okay, so now I've talked a lot about how to base up and how to get refreshes in the 5th zone, but what is the best position in the 5th zone? Where do I want to be? Well, there's a really simple answer. You want to be in center, slightly in the area of the zone that has opened up. Or, in other words, slightly on the dead side. Being in this position gives you both the opportunity and possibility of getting really free refresh eliminations and at the same time if the first moving zone pulls for you you're the duo most at the frontage of this zone giving you a slight advantage over most other players in your lobby the last zone we are going to talk about today ladies and gentlemen is the first moving zone so up until now you've played your early game perfectly having a drop map and making sure that you win off spawn then you farm loot and rotate perfectly to the second zone where you get one of the best mountain tops in the game giving you all the surge you need mostly for the rest of the game then you rotate instantly to the third zone giving you center where you build a few metal boxes and you again get the fourth zone as a result of your center position and from the fourth to fifth zone you have the best rotate in the lobby because you pre-planned your rotate and now here we are the moving zone has just popped up what do you do? The first moving zone is by far the best zone to follow a tarp in. Following tarps is and has been meta for multiple seasons. So what you want to do is early on find a tarp that someone builds that looks reusable. Meaning you can break into it and follow it without using any mats. What's important is that you tell your teammate if we get sprayed we instantly spray out the floor under us this way you have an escape plan and sometimes when following tarps you can three two one the duo that built the tar and that will often result in a free elimination if you however don't find a tarp to follow your main focus should be rotating on the dead side of the first moving zone the dead side is on the side where the 50 50 zone was covered by the storm rotating on dead side first moving requires a high level of awareness as you want to try and limit your builds as much as possible and additionally, you need to have good mat switching when rotating here. Build a few protective wooden walls here and there. And if you get shot, instantly swap to metal. When rotating on the dead side, trying to conserve builds, it means you always have to have awareness in front of you, behind you, and to your side. When you rotated into the first moving, it's crucial that you don't stop the second you've gotten into the zone. You want to go deep into the circle to get ready for the second moving zone. But that's a story for tomorrow. Guys, thank you so much for watching part 2 of how to play all 9 zones in Fortnite. The third and final part will be uploaded tomorrow, the same time as this one is released today. So be on the lookout for that. With all of that being said, please go on to have an amazing and productive day. My name is Marin TM. Stay safe and take care.